there is no link between your career and your education you don't have strong family ties something that they know that could bring you back to your home country if you don't have that the chances of them denying your visa is literally very high hi guys welcome back to my channel thank you so much for clicking on this video i'm really excited to be back on my youtube channel today i'm going to i literally cancelled my shift today um first of all the weather is bad this is not about you know canada and everything this is me from the title of this video this is me telling you the reasons why you could have an you know refusal or denial from the ircc so i'll be getting a lot of mails or you know people trying to ask me on and the reasons why they were denied um i'm sorry if i'm holding this mic close to my mouth that is because i really truly want you guys to hear me clearly and i also don't want to disturb my flatmates because i have flatmates um i hope this is convenient enough for everybody <laughs> so without further ado we're going to jump right into today's Oh, hold on if you've not yet subscribed to my channel please please subscribe to my channel like tell your friends tell everybody to subscribe to my channel because i literally i'm happy when i if i come on youtube and you know i see the growth i'm going to put in the work i promise you guys i know i always say i promise but this is real today i'm going to film like three to four videos and this is like one of the videos so if you're seeing this video um this is like the one of the videos of other videos that will be coming up so please subscribe to my channel um yeah without further ado we're going to jump right into today's video yes so welcome back to my channel you know there are reasons why you could get rejected on um coming to canada canada is a country where they literally look into you know things they literally they how do i say this so you cannot lie to any of these foreign countries right and canada is one of those countries that they literally uh sieve out they literally sieve out you know things that don't sit well with them right so we're going to jump right into one of those reasons why you could get denied or refused on your visa application now please the first point is something that you should really pay attention so i have reasons why i said this the first point is the long study gap so you're coming in as a student right and you have a long study gap okay so you know when you're applying for to come to canada as a student you need to put yourself as a consultant if you have a long study gap and you don't explain that gap they're not going to bring you in mm -mm. because they're in their head they'll be like okay so you have a long study gap for over 10 years and you just want to start up and just come to canada and school like they don't even want you to come to canada and school when you have long study gaps so when you're applying for schools in canada and you want to come into canada as a student please explain your study gaps you know there are reasons why you could have long study gaps maybe you you know got married and you start giving birth or you you know start to like change your career goals you you know you decided to go into business you there are literally reasons maybe you were not feeling so well or you went through oppression or literally anything like you had health issues there are reasons why that could be a long study gap so in that long study gap please explain you can't tell them that you graduated 2013 and then in 2023 you want to study in canada like literally 10 years like why how you understand so if you don't explain your long study gaps that would be a problem in your application please when you are applying um if you want me to make a video on you know how to write your sop your statement of purpose please let me know i'll definitely you know guide everybody on that but explaining your long study gap is really really important even if it's two years because i'm using 10 years doesn't mean that even if you have two years study gap that you should not explain it please explain every single thing for me i had um i finished school and then i went for my service i had to explain my one year service that is a compulsory um service done in my country and also i think that was during covid period and after my service yes i had to like 
i didn't further my education because obviously we're in covid um that also piled up to the reasons why i didn't apply on time so there are literally reasons you know so it's just best for you to explain yourself and you'll be good right so the second point is that you have low marks so i always like i said earlier on if you're thinking like a consultant and you have low marks and you want to come to Canada school they'll obviously not really put you into you know good consideration because looking at your grades here they feel like if you had done some other certifications to like boost your grades that would go a long way that doesn't mean that if you have low grades that you can't get um, into Canada it simply means that if you have low grades you should work on your grades you, sh- you could get certificates um, you could get literally online certificate that could help you boost your grades literally courses that like three or six months courses that you could literally do to you know show that you actually a good student and you are you really want to come to Canada to school this is literally for those that are in those that are applying to you know come to Canada to school so if you're coming in as a permanent resident I didn't go through that route so I can't really see anything much but if you have low grades that could be one of the reasons why um, you could get a denial or a refusal in your application please if you have any of that no need to panic you just need to you know work on your grades um, by taking courses um going through you know part-time schools like to boost your grades and you can now apply fully so the third point this is very very important just like the first point this is um so the third point why you could get a refusal in your application is there is no link between your career and your education so you want to come to Canada to school yes we know that but what was your career after school after your first degree what was your career before your first degree what were you doing with yourself what were you into you know so imagine if you did uh if you were a lawyer you finished from the law school and then all of a sudden you you know you stay you stay you went into business and then in your application you sent in you applied to a school to be in the food industry then like they'll be like bro sis tell us the pathway like what is happening you've moved from being a lawyer to business and then you want to go into food like what tell me what how how tell me how so if you're trying to anything you're doing try to position yourself if you're a lawyer right and you went into business the chances of you going into business administration or the supply chain is high okay so canada here is very high on you know your career path even if you finish from the medicine and then you your career you went into business and then you want to further it in business administration if you apply to a school in you know to get your business certificates and then you apply for your visa they would definitely mostly give it to you chances are high that they're going to give you your visa so please let's um work on please work on your career and your educational pathway and that will give you good points on getting into canada so the fourth point is no family ties yes this is very crucial these are this is one of the points that could literally bring you down because if you go through all these things and you don't have strong family ties i'm sorry they're going to deny you like literally i am so sure of that one um so i had a friend i think i spoke about it in my previous video and everybody were asking me why you know they, she got denied this is also one of the reasons so when you have a strong family tie when i talk about strong family ties canada wants to know that after you're done schooling that you moved back to your home country you moved back to nigeria or ghana or south africa like they literally want to know that you're not going to be like a problem in that country because you told them you're here to school right so they want to know that after schooling you're moving back even if you don't want to move back but you have to show them reasons that you're definitely going to move back so your family ties 
could be your parents if you're married your family ties could be your husband or your wife now if you have children that is a super strong family tie because they know as a mother or as a husband you're definitely going to move back to your country to see your children and your wife if you have properties that is a very strong family tie if you have lands if you have you know good legal properties that you can actually back them up and like verify them with a lawyer and everything and that would be a very strong family tie so family ties is a very strong thing Mm -hmm. it's very very strong so you should look into that if you don't have strong family ties something that they know that could bring you back to your home country if you don't have that the chances of them denying your visa is literally very high so please look into your family ties okay okay now the final point i'll be talking about is the previous refusal so you have a previous refusal right and you didn't go further to know reasons why you were refused that could be a very strong alarming reason why they could deny you your next visa so if you were denied before in your application and you did not request for your gcms notes gcms note is a note that specifically tells you the reasons why your visa officer denied you your visa to come into canada usually when you get denied in um, in your visa application they always give like a generic note or sorry you were denied in coming into canada and stuff like that but if you go further to request for your gcms note that would go a long way in knowing the exact reasons why you were denied so with the exact reasons why you were denied that would help you in tackling your further application so if you don't get your gcms note and you go ahead and for and apply for another um, and send in uh, your and uh, your second application even when you don't know the reasons why you were denied that would also give you another denial so please if you were denied in your previous application don't forget to order your gcms note that would help you to know the exact reasons why you were denied in your previous application if you want to know more on the gcms note you could literally browse everything online everything is literally online browse everything online you can get the steps on ordering your gcms notes for me if you get to also ask me on the steps to get your gcms notes, i'm definitely mostly going to browse online so please do your due diligence and get the steps on ordering your gcms notes so yes i believe with those five points of mine if you look into it i believe that your next application will not be denied and i also believe believe that when you send in your first application you also not be denied please i'm begging you go through these steps even if you want to watch this video 100 times even if you want to send it to your friends that you know they're applying for visa please you can send it to them save them save them so yeah we've come to the end of this video thank you so much for clicking on this video if you're not subscribed to this lens please subscribe please subscribe because in this channel yeah we're just being honest we're just being you know i'm telling you the real facts so please subscribe let me encourage me you know encourage me um yeah that'll be end of this video thank you so much for watching to this length and i'll see you in my next video